Hello everybody and welcome to Spindle TV. I'm your host Laney Shaughnessy and every Tuesday night we try to go live with a project class and tonight in our veteran project is we're following along from last week from our beginners course on signs. This week we're going to do another basic beginners project uh, but um, we're going to make a marble maze. Um, a fun little marble maze game. It's great for the kids and adults and all that good stuff. And um, we're going to learn about working with offsets. Uh, we're going to learn about our snap options and our snapping grids uh, and uh, drawing vectors, uh, working with node editing, all kinds of little things that we're going to learn in this project as we play around. Now, I haven't made a marble maze in a while, so uh, um, we're going to try to get uh, uh, through it uh, painlessly. <laughs> But uh, before we get started with tonight's class and everything, I want to make an announcement. BuildItTV.com. BuildItTV.com. B-U-I-L-D-T-V-I-T-TV.com is live. And um, we are uh, the still a lot of work on some of the site, but the store is wide open uh, and available for... Uh, purchasing purchasing products and models and all that wonderful stuff so the um, if you would like to check out builditv.com and uh, check out the store and the sign projects and everything uh, not all of the projects are posted yet but there are quite a few most of all the Thanksgiving and Christmas projects are available uh, for purchase and again our Halloween projects even though Halloween is uh, only a couple of days away There's still time to make a few projects, but builditv.com is now live and um, uh, Yeah, show your support go over and get some projects. Uh, there's some pretty cool ones uh, There that uh, there's project packs 21 project packs seven project packs for Thanksgiving uh, and uh, so on and so forth for so check it out builditv.com and uh, check out the shop, the new shop. Um, we're gonna be adding projects to it uh, daily on a regular basis. And um, we're going to be, uh, you know, uh, getting all of the projects and things on here uh, that are available for you guys and girls. But yes, uh, if you're interested, um, check them out, order them. Thank you. All right, enough of that. Uh, let's get back to our project now uh, This example that I have up on the screen is a marble. It's a two-sided marble maze that I made uh, last year uh, Well, no, I'm sorry uh, It was uh, When did COVID hit it was the year before last and uh, I took it around it traveled around with me to all the woodworking shows and all the visitors of the different woodworking shows at the different shows uh, They got a chance to kind of play around with it and everything and it was pretty fun um, now the marble maze can use marbles. Uh, personally, I use uh, steel ball bearings, three eighths inch diameter ball bearings, um, and uh, with mine. And you can get them in, heck, you can get them in ten packs, twenty packs, hundred packs, thousand packs, and and so on and so forth. Uh, they come in different diameters and all. I use the three eighths inch diameter uh, steel ball bearings and. Um, this particular project was a 25 piece 3 8 inch uh, precision chrome steel bearings but uh, the G25 uh, they roll very nicely and um, uh, they're just uh, I like them personally I like to use them in my marble mazes uh, more so than marbles uh, and also I, I guess I should call it a precision chrome steel bearing maze <laughs> but uh, on Amazon, you can get those. Uh, there's all kinds of different uh, uh, options and all, and um, basically three eighths inch uh, steel marbles. It's kind of the search term to find those, but that's what I use. And so the design tonight are trails that uh, you know we make in the project. They're going to uh, be based around that three eighths inch uh, diameter ball bearing. So there's plenty of room. Uh, for it to roll around and stuff. Okay, cool beans. All right, let's get uh, back going here and uh, let's start off fresh. 
and uh, you know I don't mind if you don't pay attention in a nice class and you're over on builditv.com <laughs> all right let's see here let's uh, I'm gonna actually start a brand new project um, so let's right click and go to VGAR Pro 11 this is applicable to desktop pro uh, Spire and uh, we're going to be taking advantage of the grid our grid uh, snap grid generally when we're freehand drawing or we're designing and stuff uh, in my case 90% of the time that grid is turned off I only use it for you know precision things and stuff um, we're gonna start off with a project <clears throat> and uh, the project is going to be 15 inches in length and it's going to be um, the gameplay area I'd like the gameplay area to be at least about nine inches uh, but the overall project you know after the depending on what shape we go with and stuff after the cutout and all uh, I'm gonna go 12 so uh, I'll just do it out of a 1 by 12 so let's go 11 and a quarter and um, if you're doing a, uh, a two-sided maze or something you're gonna want at least an inch and a half thick material because our grooves you know for that ball bearing especially if you're like my maze I wish I had a picture of the actual maze itself it had an acrylic top screwed onto it uh, a clear acrylic top screwed onto it so that when they flipped the the maze over to, to the ball would go through a hole when they flipped it over to run it on the other side to the finish line and everything the marble didn't fall out right you know um, and, and stuff like that and roll all over the ground now if it's just a kid's single-sided maze which is kind of what we're gonna be making tonight and stuff uh, it doesn't need that that top and all um, but um, you know it's it could be kind of a you know a coordination a challenge maze hand-eye coordination kind of thing so it could be out of uh, you know 3 8 inch material I'm sorry 3 quarter inch material uh, if you wanted to uh, for that um, and uh, if not you can also go a little bit thicker you know a little bit thicker and stuff uh, most marble mazes like if I went on um, if I went online and uh, looked at most of the just you know very simple marble maze um, let's see here for kids or what have you uh, no, that's a terrible, terrible option. Let's go, bear with me a second. Let me see if I can pull up, uh, use the keyword wood. Wood, mobile maze. All right. Kind of a labyrinth type maze, if you will. Um, let's pull this over onto the screen. So, they could be all kinds of you know different shapes uh, they could have different uh, looks and feels to them they could be very very basic uh, kind of thing almost like with your edge gluing pieces and all we're going to be carving this on the CNC uh, so um, we're going to do something a little bit uh, more uh, you know kind of uh, fun uh, I don't we're not doing a monkey head or anything like that but uh, we're gonna have some complicated patterns and paths and everything. And this is gonna be more the style that we're, we're going with here uh, that you see on the screen on the uh, right hand side right here and, um, and everything. But there's all kinds of different things. Now you can get really complicated with the built upright erected type mazes and all. We're not covering that today in today's class, but we may do something like that in the future. Okie dokie, tokie dokie. All right. so. Uh, we're going to go with something more along the lines of what you see on the right hand side of the screen here. And um, yeah, let's close that. All right. So I'm going to go 15 inches wide, 11 and a quarter inches, uh, 15 inches long, 11 and a quarter inches wide. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to go three quarter inches thick uh, for this project. It's going to be just a very basic something that that's fun that could sit on the coffee table and people can play with tell them not to lose your marbles and uh we'll go from there now i'm going to be touching off on the material surface and for me i start in the bottom left corner but you can start anywhere you would like with your project and we're going to click okay 
Now, the first thing is, is we want to uh, determine what size marble or ball bearing or whatever it is that we're going to be using because of the fact that our trail, our path, has to be you know wide enough, cut wide enough that we will get that uh, um, uh, that marble can move freely and everything. And since I'm using a three inch eight diameter marble, I should have no problem using an, a half inch diameter box core bit to cut my trail parts out and everything, and that will give me plenty of room. For that marble to uh, move freely without being you know jammed up and stuff like that uh, so uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with what a box core bit is and believe it or not some people honestly don't know uh, what a box core bit is or what it looks like it's basically a router bit uh, it's also uh, you know sometimes known as a round nose bit or um, a uh, uh, bull nose bit. I think some people, I think sometimes somebody refers to that, but basically it's got that nice, almost round half marble look to it, uh, and everything. Uh, and so, um, we're going to be using a half inch diameter, um, uh, ball nose bit or pff, box core bit. And, uh, you could go down to Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever and pick one of those up, or you can order them online and things. And they make this nice, rounded channel and that's going to be great for the marble just to roll and flow in and everything so uh, we're going to be using a box core bit for that now the box core bit is added uh, to your tool database um, and it's added as a form tool because you actually have to draw in the uh, um, the profile half the bit the right side of the profile you have to draw it in your software and then have that vector selected that you draw and draw it to scale so it can be added into your tool database and I'm going to show you that as well too uh, we're going to start off with that so that way your tool database is set up for that kind of bit and uh, we're going to um, uh, go with that so let's go ahead and uh, click OK and so basically, the uh, half inch diameter bit, one half by one half, um, that's going to give me a, a, enough of a curve that my 3 8 inch diameter ball can have plenty of room to go in through the walls. And so if I draw that circle on the screen, I can then uh, go into node editing. And I'm simply on the right side node, I'm going to cut the vector there. And on the bottom center node, I'm going to right click and cut the vector there. And then I'm going to delete the top half. So once we have that right half profile of the bit, we can go in and select that. And then in our tool database, let's move that over here. We can go into whatever category we want to go into. Uh, we can add that bit and when we add it, we're going to be adding it as a form tool So it's going to take that selected vector and draw the other half It'll automatically fill in the diameter. So make sure you draw it to scale uh, and then um, you'll be able to uh, Fill in your parameters and uh, your past steps your step over I generally have it step over either 33.3% of the bit, which is a third of the bit on the step over if it's doing multiple passes or something like that. Uh, or in this case, I've got it set for a 20% step over. Um, the bit uh, between 18,000, 22,500 RPMs, anywhere in there is fine. Uh, no less than 18, but uh, so I've got it set at 22,500 RPMs. And for my machine, I'm running that. I'm cutting it at 55 inches a minute and plunging at 20. If you have a more robust or industrial machine or something, you can absolutely go much faster and all. But I'm at, uh, for my machine, my midsize unit, I'm at a 55 inch uh, per minute feed rate with a plunge of 20. And on my pass steps, I have it set to an eighth of an inch per pass. Um, that's kind of my go-to on, on most things uh, is an eighth inch, but you can, you know, uh, set your passes accordingly. Uh, just uh, don't, you know, overstress the bit of your machine. Okay, 
So uh, once you do that, you can apply all of that, change the name up here at the top to whatever you want the name to be. Now I already have a bit added in my tool database, so I'm not gonna add another one. I'm just gonna hit cancel. But that's how we would add a, uh, a in this case, a box core bit uh, or a round nose bit or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, to our tool database as a form tool. Any tool like an OG bit, round over, box core bit, dovetail bit, uh, you need to draw that profile in and stuff. Well, I say dovetail bits, uh, you can't do undercuts, so um, uh, that would be added as a dummy bit. But um, your rope twist bits, your OG bits, round overs, uh, box core bits, and things like anything with a special profile you draw the right half of that profile to scale, and that's how you add it to your tool database. Okay, cool beans. Um, some of you, uh, Ronnie, you might be getting buffering and stuff, but let me know if y'all are getting buffering. Uh, we might get some from time to time because I'm using a different uh, codex today, uh, a variable codex or stream key, should I say, and I wanna see how the variable stream does uh, if it doesn't do well for me, then um, you know I may change up the stream key uh, to my 1080p. But uh, let me know. Questions about the Photo VCarve tool. What does the step over retract do with the tool? Um, Photo VCarve step over retract. So you're that should be two separate things. That shouldn't be one thing. Uh, and uh, your your step over is how far the bit steps over from one position to another. The retract is how far the bit uh, raises up. So if they're calling it a step over retract, it that is the distance above the material that it raises up before it steps over. If they're calling it a step over retract, that is the distance that the bit is above the material, safely above the material, before it steps over. So you could set that for, I don't know, 16th of an inch, eighth of an inch, quarter, whatever you want, however far you want the bit to raise up, to retract, before it steps over. Okay? All right. Cool. All right. So with the project here, um, I think I'm going to... Uh, I think I'm gonna go with kind of a, a, a square body versus a rectangular one. I might have some radius corners and all to give it some kind of aesthetic look. Um, I like the round mazes too and stuff, but I think I'm gonna go with the square body on this. And so what I would like uh, to do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kind of get my, um, my outer perimeter drawn first and uh, then I can figure out where my handles are gonna be and stuff like that and all. Uh, and uh, 15 inches, uh, that's gonna be a little maze. We might, we might extend the size of that a little bit. But um, I'm going to basically, uh, I am gonna go the Width of my board, I'm gonna use the letter W in my, I'm in my rectangle tool. And uh, I'm gonna have uh, on my X and Y, the center, I'm gonna have that at uh, my width divided by two. And my height, I'm gonna use the letter H or the letter Y, that's fine, divide that by two uh, to get that. So my square rectangle will show up here. And uh, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to subtract two inches off the width and hit equals on that 13. No, actually, I want to go the full width, the full width. I don't know what I'm thinking. So the full width and, uh, but on the height, I'm going to subtract two inches. So H minus two equals. And uh, I'm gonna create that rectangle there. And um, the two inches, it's one inch on each side. I'm just basically, I subtracted two inches uh, for that to create that rectangle. Now, uh, in my rectangle tool, uh, when I was there, I should have went in with my radius corners. 
And I'm actually, instead of typing in a radius, I'm just gonna kind of pull in the radius. So these green nodes, I'm gonna pull them in until I kind of get the shape that I want. And I want it to have kind of the straight edges with this nice round curve and everything. So I am gonna go with a full radius that I can go here, uh, which is gonna be in my case, four and five eighths uh, radius on that. And I'm gonna click apply. And I can see that uh, I'm gonna probably want a longer board. Bear with me a second. What was my other maze at? See that same general shape. I really like that shape for a maze. Let me see what my other one was at. Uh, it was an 18 and uh, 11 eighths. Um, I'm sorry, 18 and 7 eighths. So yeah, 15 is going to be just a little too shy for me. It's great. That's a great one for small kids, but I want this to be able to be played with kids and adults. So I am going to bring this up to uh, 18 and um, uh, stretch that out a bit. And I'm going to close that and I'm going to go back up to my job setup and I'm going to change that to 18 as well. I think that's going to be uh, good for me. All right, let's get centered back on our material. And yeah, that's going to give me plenty of room to come up with some cool maze stuff and everything. All right, now, first off, uh, you know, the handles uh, that I'm going to be doing, um, the handles that are going to be here, I, I want uh, to, I want it to be kind of an easy grip. So if someone is gripping this with their fingers, you know, I want it, I want them to have plenty of room. I don't want it to be tight in there, right? I want it to be loose because they're going to be, you know, twisting and turning this thing. So I want it to be somewhat uh, comfortable uh, on the hand. And, uh, and I am going to be rounding off the edges and stuff with that. So, but uh, I think on the width, I'm going to go with um, a, a three quarter inch width and um, just three inches on the height. I believe, let me look at my hand here. I gotta measure my actual hand. Yeah. All right, so mine is exactly, at my fingertips is exactly three inches wide. I got small hands. Um, comfortable, I'm gonna go three and a half. So let's change that to 3.5. Okay. And um, the distance where that hand kind of grips and everything um, I don't want to be too far from the edge. I want it to be kind of a nice, comfortable grip. Uh, you can, um, whatever distance you want. Currently, right now, I am where I just laid it. I just dropped this right here. Currently, from the edge to here, I'm about, um, I'm less than an inch away. Uh, you know, about, uh, seven sixteenths. But, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab it right here and snap it to the edge. And then I'm gonna use the move tool to do a relative move on the x-axis. And I'm relatively gonna move it out one inch. Okay. And then I'm gonna take that shape and I'm going to mirror it to the other side. So I'm gonna create a mirror copy and I'm gonna flip it about job center and I'm gonna flip it horizontally. That'll create my handles. Okay. Now the gameplay area. Um, so let's imagine, if you will, uh, let's take, uh, let's see here. I want square corners on this. I'm going to do radius corners, but not right this second. Uh, I just want to get it centered up. And I want to take a look at it. Let's go a little bit wider. I'm going to hold the shift key down. I'm going to, I'm in double, I'm in, I double clicked on my vector and that's transform mode. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm just going to pull this out just a little bit here. And now I'm going to, in that rectangle, I'm going to go into those radius corners and I'm just going to pull them in 
just a little bit, about like that. And that, uh, that'll look good to me. Now, on my gameplay area, on this particular part, on this particular one, I'm not gonna do an acrylic cover. If I was gonna do an acrylic cover, I'd go with a little bit thicker wood because I would be creating a little recessed pocket uh, that the acrylic would sit in uh, flush. And, uh, and then my game maze would be below that. This is gonna be an open maze, meaning there's not gonna have an acrylic cover. It's just gonna be an open maze and everything. And um, uh, what I would like is um, when it's sitting on the table, uh, I don't mind the marble being in, uh, you know, a certain, just like just laying inside the board. But I would like to create a, uh, a little spot on the board near my start point. So I gotta figure out where I wanna start and finish. I think I'm gonna start on the left side. I'm left-handed, I like going left to right. Uh, you can go right to left of your choice. But I'm gonna start on the left corner here and the maze is gonna travel through and it's gonna end somewhere on the right side here. Uh, so over here, I'm going to just go with a, uh, half inch circle right about there. That looks good. And that'll be a place for the marble to, I'll do a, with my box core bit, I'll just, uh, do a drilling tool path with it, uh, to create that nice little dip just for the marble to sit in when it's idle sitting on the coffee table or whatever the case may be. All right, now I'm gonna turn my grid on uh, and the grid uh, button is up here. Uh, I wanna make sure I have smart snapping and geometry snapping turned on, but I've got my grid turned on. And by default, uh, the grid spacing, the current grid spacing is set at a quarter inch apart. Now, if we go to the edit tool and we go down to snap options, or we could have hit F4 on the keyboard for the keyboard shortcut, um, we can adjust our grid spacing here uh, as we go and everything. Uh, and uh, since I am uh, using a, um, uh, a 3 8 inch marble and all, my grid spacing is just for my center line, the trail, the path that's going to get followed. My offsets that I'm going to do after I create the trail that's gonna be the important part that I'm offsetting in both directions far enough that it creates that closed vector for me for my tool pathing and stuff uh, that um, I can uh, just do a pocket cut and I could use a box core bit, I can use an end mill, I could use whatever, but I want a closed vector for when I do that pocket cut and stuff. Um, and uh, uh, for that, I need to make sure my offsets are the correct offset distance, but my grid spacing is gonna be fine, set at a quarter inch apart. And the grid spacing, basically all I'm doing with that is with my polyline tool, it's giving me a snap point so I can, you know, when I'm creating the trail, whatever that trail may be, you know, to get from uh, start to finish and of course this is not going to be my maze that would be very simple wouldn't it um, but uh, the the snapping points are going to give me some points to snap to and things all right let's undo that undo 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 and um, uh, there's going to be some traps so uh, I'm going to have a path that's going to get me from start to finish uh, there's going to be some traps uh, in the maze and um, what we're doing now is we're using the polyline tool to create the path. Once the path is created, we will end up taking that selected vectors. We will offset them in both directions outward to create our path vectors for our actual tool pathing. Uh, so we want to make sure that uh, number one, because we're going to be creating radiuses for when it's turning corners and stuff like that. We want to make sure that we are um, we're not too tight and the lines the segments aren't too short. So, if I what I mean by that is if I were here, here, and then I was turning the corner, let me get to my snap point, snappy booger, uh, in here, that would be and let me end that line there. That would be a bit of a too tight of a corner for my um, marble to turn. 
Now, if you want to, if uh, you're worried that you might get into that kind of uh, situation, then go to your snap options and uh, change this to a 3 eighths of an inch spacing uh, to spread those out some for yourself, okay? All right, now let me go to my snap options here. And my uh, fixed nudge distance, I'm gonna narrow that down to a uh, 16th of an inch, too many decimal points. And um, the snap angle is just set to 15 degrees. Uh, and my snap radius, I wanna make that uh, fairly small, meaning when I uh, snap the radius of where it will snap to from that dot, I want to be kind of, uh, you know, uh, relatively small on that so that I have to be very close uh, to that dot uh, to snap to it and things. So I can't be like off in the middle or something like that. Okay. All right. So let's uh, undo that. Net to net. Okay. All right. So now let's start laying this out. First thing is I'm gonna need kind of a start point. And so I'm gonna actually use a, uh, a half inch a diameter circle, which I just to kind of figure out where my start point's gonna be. And uh, I have to keep in mind that when it's cutting, my wall thickness and stuff um, is gonna be very important. Uh, you know between each trail this trail and this trail and you know whichever trails they go I'm gonna probably uh, try to keep it at um, a, uh, a quarter inch uh, Possibly three-eighths so these walls here in some of the areas where the trails are side by side I want to have some meat there some distance and stuff and so I want to make sure that when I'm drawing that when I offset if my lines get too close together and I have a thin wall then I've got to remap some things okay cool all right let's come back here all right so I've got a start point in a general area and let's um, let's get this kind of laid out here so I'm going to probably that be a good start point and I'm going to end in the same uh, spot. So I'm actually going to draw a line at the center of my radius here to the center of this radius here. And I'm going to take this marble, I'm going to select the, or that hole, I'm going to select my line and I'm going to mirror it by flipping it about the line. Whoa, that was not what I expected at all. What happened there? Oh, no, that was not the right option, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am, uh, that was not the right option because it flipped it the closest part of the line uh, and everything. So that was ignore exactly what I just did there. That is a no, no. I am going to uh, flip this horizontally and then vertically uh, I don't need a mirror copy of that uh, one, so I'm going to uncheck that and flip that vertically, and that'll get me right where I need to be. So don't flip on the line on that. That was a, that was a bad example of what to do. All right, so I have my start and finish um, laid in here, and uh, if, if if things are blurry for you. Uh, Jeff, go into your YouTube video. There's a little gear or sprocket uh, icon. Uh, go into that uh, gear or sprocket and change the um, resolution of your video. Okay, so you can get that high definition video. Okie dokie. All right. Um, so if you're getting uh, things in fuzzy and blurry and you can't see the icons clearly and all that, change the resolution. It's the little, I think I believe it's still the little gear icon on the YouTube video. Uh, and it should give you different options and all. Cool. All right, so um, let's go in and uh, let's start our trail out. So the let's get our polyline tool going here. 
and um, now even though I have the grid on I don't necessarily have to utilize it but I am it, it's gonna help me with uh, you know I have my angles it shows when I'm drawing lines and stuff but it's gonna help me kind of visualize this path uh, you know I will be coming out of the middle of the circle here and the middle of the circle is right in between two of those rows you know on that start point you know I could be you know I could if I wanted to I could snap my start point to one of those circles so that way I'm right on that trail whatever's gonna be easiest for you to do okay um, and uh, you know if that's easiest for you to do just make sure that you know you kinda match up your finish or you don't have to match it up your finish could be anywhere you want it really it's your maze put it where you want it okay all right so let's go ahead and get our polyline tool and let's get started uh, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is let's come out and then I'm going to come down and I keep clicking prematurely let's come down here and I'm going to create a false path here now bear with me a second something is driving me absolutely insane with these snap points this is why I don't like using the grid from time to time is because it is uh, they're supposed to be snap points and my radius is not snapping to them it should be snapping right to them let me go back into my snap options here and let me see I want object bounds turned on let's see here snap distances is on snap angle increments I think it's good there fixed nudge distance got that turned down fixed nudge distance is low I mean that's relatively low all right Vetric work with me brother I'm gonna go into node editing and I'm going to cut that vector there should have just deleted the span but there we go and I need this line to snap to that point thank you very much and man I wish they Vectric if you're watching give me an option to change the brightness or the color of the snap grid points I can see them when I'm zoomed out but if I'm nearsighted and I need to zoom in they start to kind of blend away thank you I need to mention that to them all right let's get back to our line tool and uh, I want to create, uh, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to create a little false road there and we'll end it there. Uh, and then I'm going to come back and continue this direction. Okay, so let's go, let's go up this way. Let's go back. Let's go one more up this way and then back. I will know, I will know soon enough. And there we go again. Stand by. Snap to that point. I will know when I create my offsets if my any of my corners are too uh, long or far. But uh, we just want to start kind of uh, building this maze. Once I get uh, the, and once again, hit undo, why am I not snapping to those points? I think I'm pulling the mouse a little bit uh, and not paying attention to where it is when I click. Um, you wanna see the little four little star, I mean, they're so small, the four little star dots with a plus sign in the middle. 
and that lets you know you're on a snapping point when you're in the grid and that's kind of what I want to see that little icon when I click there and everything um, I'm gonna come on this I am going to come all the way down to here I'm going to hit the space bar in my line and I'm going to come about to the middle of this line and I'm going to create another trap here, space bar to finish. Um, and then I want to, I'll create a trap up here. And let's come down. All right, so now they're going to have to travel a pretty good distance back this way. Um, I'm going to create some false trails uh, uh, throughout this line in just a moment. Um, we can have them come a little bit further down. And again, I got to remember that I'm offsetting in both directions to create that half inch width for my bit for my marble and all so my line spacing uh, just to give you an idea just so you have an idea of what's happened what's going to happen is uh, let's say I select this vector here and I go to my offset tool and I offset in both directions a quarter of an inch to me that's once I do not want sharp corners uh, but it's going to create that trail okay I'm going to have to adjust my radiuses on the sharp corners. We'll do that with the fillet tool, but it's going to create that trail and I'm going to have to close off the end of the vectors to create that closed vector for the, the pocket cut and all. But I want to make sure that when I offset these parts uh, and everything that I have plenty of room. And so like this line, I came down too far. I want to be a little bit closer uh, to here and that, you know, from this line here to the next line, I'm going to have that 3 eighths of an inch wall, but I don't want a big gap like I have right there. So I'm going to undo um, this and go back to that polyline tool. And let's do that one more time. I want to come down uh, to right about here. And then across and uh, let's see here I want to come down and then over come down back come up And over this is kind of the main trail I'm just working it over to that from that start to finish and then I'll come back and fill in my dead zones or traps or or what have you I can even create uh, some cuts with my uh, box core bit to create little marble drops where it drops in or if it drops through like it falls if you go in it falls out of the board or whatever you know uh, generally, I don't do that because then people have to stop, pick up the marble out of the floor or whatever the case may be and things. Um, but uh, we'll come back and create. Let me hit undo on this. We'll come back and create our traps and stuff in just a minute. Right now, we're just trying to get the main trail. And it's really just kind of, uh, you know, whatever your imagination, you know, gives you uh, and stuff as far as uh, how it's going to be. I'm going to snap to here and come all the way back up to here. Let's come over. And down all right let's go in and put in our traps now so um, we're going to go from here to here 
Um, when we do our offsets, when our traps and all, when everything is all done and offset in both directions, then we can start kind of connecting things and creating more of a complex trail. Right now is what you're seeing is what the path the marble would have to follow to get from start A to B, but then we can start filling in other routes, other trails, and things like that. Um, let's answer a quick question here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Todd says, why can't you just profile on the line and save all the offset stuff? Well, uh, that's a good question. You could uh, if you wanted to. Um, but with your uh, offset on the line and everything, the um, radius is, it's going, when, when that bit just comes and it just cuts, it's going to create, you know, whatever radius it is. And we want to give ourselves a little bit more room with our fillet tool. We're going to widen up those corners uh, and everything uh, so our marble can, you know, has free reign to take a, a corner very well. Um, and uh, some people, instead, of they, if they're not using a box core bit, they can use just an end mill if they want. Uh, it just won't have a round bottom. It'll just be a square bottom and everything. They can use an end mill as a pocket cut um, and, uh, and stuff. Um, you, Todd, can do whatever you want. Uh, I'm not going to teach that way because I don't prefer that way. Um, but, uh, yeah, give it a try and see how it works out for you. I've never done an on-the-line profile with a marble maze. Uh, it ha it's not how I was taught uh, by, you know, someone that, that kind of specialized in them. Um, and uh, so I'm just passing that knowledge on. But... I'm assuming it will work for uh, if you do it on the line, but I, I, I'm assuming also it won't work appropriately. But you give it a shot. Okay? Cool. Because um, I have no clue. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never done it. Don't know if it's going to work out properly or not. I just know this method works every single time. <laughs> so we just got to go from there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm not sure. All right, let's go ahead and... Let's create a path here. I honestly don't know, Todd. I really don't. So that's something you can experiment with for sure. All right. Let's go there. This one, I'm going to go from here all the way through. And... you right there and let's take you 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 I'm gonna bring this one down Bear with me a second. There we go. Yeah. Those little gray dots will get you blind sometimes. Oh. I was wondering, uh, I was like, why is this one dot everywhere I go off? Why is it off? It's a damn spot on my screen. <laughs> it was a perfect little spot on the screen. Um, I don't know what that was, but literally every time I looked at it, it was like, what? What was that? And it was a, it was a spot on the screen. Holy jeez. Okay. Space that off there. We're going to come back here. All right, uh, let's see. Where else do I want to? Let's create a shortcut. I, yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if it's coming around here. Uh, that'll connect to that. All right, let's see what we've got so far. Sometimes when uh, doing this, it's hard to kind of visualize. I mean, you can see where which way the marbles got a roll and everything, but when everything gets offset, uh, then you really see what you what you got going on. So let's select all of these vectors here. And let's offset in both directions. All right, we're gonna continue anyway. Okay, there we go. All right, let's close that. Now, the selected vector that I have selected right now, I'm gonna go ahead while it's selected and I'm going to move it to its own layer. Uh, and I'm gonna call this the main trail our main path, let's call it uh, main path, it's fine. Uh, center line. I'm gonna make it red, uh, so that way it kind of stands out uh, from my other vector lines. Let's go ahead and take our, let's turn off that main trail for a minute. circle we don't need that's got to go uh, this is my path here I'm gonna make that a new layer uh, I'm gonna just call this my uh, tool path vectors I'm gonna make them I need something that stands out for you guys on the screen. Uh, let's go with, now that, that probably doesn't stand out too well for y'all, so bear with me a second. Y'all see that? Y'all can see that, right? If you can't see it, let me know. I'll change the color. All right. So now I need to start kind of uh, combining things together and closing off the vectors. So um, the thing that uh, uh, may have occurred in, in some of these instances is uh, it could have created duplicates and that's what I have going on here I have some duplicates where lines are over lines and um, the uh, reason being is because um, I made my own I created my own duplicates when I made that when I copied them to the layer instead of moving them to a new layer so uh, my layer one is kind of got my original so let me go back and undo that for a second. And let me do that properly. Lord of mercy, we'll get it here. All right, I'm gonna move them to that toolpath vector layer. And that way they're on that layer and I don't have duplicates, wonderful. All right, at this point in time, I don't need the grid anymore, I can turn that off. And now I need to start combining things. I got to change my radiuses on my corners so the marble can flow freely. And uh, I may have to change some of the path if I, you know, if my marble is going to be in a tight area. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the end here and I'm going to select uh, these two vectors. And I'm going to join them with a straight line to close that off. I'm going to go into node editing node editing and I'm going to take that straight line and turn it into an arc okay so that'll be my first path um, the 
arc here right here on this corner I want to come into my fillet tool and I want um, you know it a decent size radius so it can you know turn that corner and all uh, in this case I'm uh, using a quarter inch radius uh, which is half the diameter of my bit uh, let's go in and uh, take our scissors and trim away and kind of connect the dots here at the end of this path here I'm going to join with a straight line and I'll go into node editing again and turn that into an arc okay uh, when I joined with a straight line it kind of closed off the other end too so I need to trim that away to open that roadway back up all right uh, let's go in and all the vectors that are open right now, I'm gonna just join them with a straight line. Um, and let's do that for all. You can only select two at a time. Join with a straight line. Join with a straight line. Oh, hold on. There we go this one as well this one as well um, this I'll close off with a straight line this one I'll use the extend tool uh, for that but let's do this one join with a straight line and finally this one here might as well do this one too okay now let's start kind of connecting these together I'm gonna to go into node editing hit the letter N on the keyboard to take me quickly to node editing and I'm gonna turn that into an arc that arc went in the wrong direction I'm gonna pull it up here uh, over here I'm gonna do the same thing and I don't know why it's wanting to go in reverse. Uh, here, same thing. If it goes in reverse, just pull it up. This one, it's just gonna be a little trap there and here. And I might throw, since I have some room here, if they get stuck in this trap, I might put some text in here where if they're keeping score or whatever the case may be I don't think there's really a score keeping on this but um, you know if they're doing a timed race if they get caught in that if a marble falls in this little divot might do it down here uh, that they you know they uh, deduct you know 20 seconds from their time or whatever the case may be um, I don't know something fun like that let's go in here and uh, turn this to an arc pull it up the letter N on your keyboard is uh, node editing uh, it's easier than just kind of moving the mouse all the way back over and things man my arcs going on reverse on me today this one I am going to I'm gonna take these two and I'm just gonna move them down and tie them into that trail there. It'll be a little shortcut that they could take. Um, yeah. My finish line here. Okay. So let's do some scissor trimming. We're gonna trim this and this uh, to create that path. We're gonna trim here and here. Um, I'll deal with this in just a moment, but we'll trim here and here. Need to put an arc at the end of that one there. Uh, this one gets trimmed four times. This one gets trimmed on the inside lines. 
Same thing here. All right, there's my little shortcut. Might uh, change that up a little bit. Okay, so all my trimming is done. Uh, and here I need to go back into node editing. And on this one, I'm going to uh, have this arc. And I could almost, man, I could almost uh, tie this together here where if it comes in, if they go this way, it kind of circles them back around. Or if they go here, it comes in and it circles them back around here. Or I could just have them dead end. I don't know, I kind of almost want to take this one and move that over to here and uh, tie that together. Yep. But up here, I'm going to delete this span here and here. Okay. And I'm going to use the extend tool. The extend tool, we're going to go here to here to create, to close off that corner. And then I'm going to take my scissors uh, here and here to trim up that corner. And then I'm going to use my fillet tool, quarter inch radius and everything. And I'm going to start rounding off these corners and things. Um, you don't have to necessarily round off every corner uh, and stuff, but it does a lot to flow better. I mean, if it's uh, if it's not rounded off, then when the marble comes in here, it's you know, if they're there, they're gonna fall into that spot. It doesn't have to be every single corner that you radius and everything, you know, because when that marble runs in here, it, it can either go left or right, you know, an intersection. But when it's turning a kind of a sharp corner, you want to, you know, have a little bit of room. Uh, for that and um, that wide radius this is going to be wider okay this area here is going to be wider than my half inch diameter bit um, and everything so when my bit comes in and, and, and cuts this pocket and everything it's going to be cleaning out it's going to be stepping over so we got to look and see how that's going to look too uh, with that half inch diameter bit and everything and see uh, how it handles that corner if not then I'm going to have to tighten it up just a little bit uh, so that I don't have such a wide space. All that comes when we start toolpathing and we figure it out uh, and we look at the cut and then we see what we need to adjust and change. Um, let's go back to, um, let's see here. Oh, that's why I made the sharp corners rounded. Uh, late start here. Hey, Crystal, how you doing? Looks like you guys are conversation amongst yourselves. Um. Yeah, and Todd, and and you're that's that's exactly right. Is the walls, and the wall thickness and stuff on your material, the you know the remaining pieces and all, with the offsets you can see that clearly, and you can see if your walls are too thin, if they're too thick, you know, and things like that. You can you can say, man, I got a lot of dead space in there, so I'm gonna make this marble maze even tighter, and I'm gonna add more twists and turns and all that and it's just easier to do that way uh, that's why I'm showing it this way and stuff um, the all right here I think I'm going to trim this together so that kind of almost kind of creates a loop so they can turn this way and in uh, or if they come in here, I don't know. Is that stupid? Um, I don't know. It's the fun thing about a maze. Uh, kind of, you've got to mentally go through the trail. And is it going to be what? What level is this maze? I mean, is it going to be ages six to ten? Is it going to be you know uh, expert level where there's much more tighter corners? You're going to use a smaller marble. Uh, instead of a 3 8 you might go down to a quarter inch diameter marble. That way you can pack in more tight corners and things. Uh, you can, on Amazon, they have quarter inch, 3 8 half inch. They have all different types sizes of those uh, steel ball bearings. Um, 
but you know with a smaller marble you can get more trails and turns and traps and things like that uh, that could be kind of an expert level maze uh, this one is just going to be for you know when the nieces and nephews and kids come over uh, or something it gives them something to play with it's on the porch uh, but also the adults can I like playing with them too whenever I see one I always want to pick it up and see if I can solve it kind of deal um, you really want to make it complicated to do a two-sided one um, and uh, the two-sided maze just for your FYI that I do have created here with the tool pass and all the layers the finished project and everything um, and let me show you all sides these files are going to be available for you to download. So you're actually going to get the two-sided maze files along with whatever we create tonight as well. Um, and everything. So you're going to get that. Uh, the two-sided maze, the marble falls through to the other side. Um, and uh, you finish on the other side. So you got to go through the whole maze on one side, then drop through, and then the whole maze on the other side. And... Uh, it's previewing it's doing all the tool pass right now I'll show you what it looks like when it's done Come on. now you can see in this two-sided maze here um, let me flip it back or well, let me flip it over while it's doing that uh, you'll see this little pocket that's being cut out right now this is where the little eighth inch plexiglass will go you can get it from Lowe's it's just a uh, what do they call it Lexan or plexiglass or what have you um, it's recessed and then the marble maze is pocketed down from there uh, and there'll be little pinholes that'll show you where your screws are you can use those uh, that toolpath pattern for your holes for your plexiglass as well uh, and just little brass little screws um, little brass wood screws uh, or silver wood screw they don't have to be brass but um, uh, little wood screws and all just to screw that top down and that traps the marble inside so the marble doesn't come out of the once it's in there it's in there kind of thing uh, so if they finish and then someone else picks it up then they're in the finish mark and they've got to work their way back to the start and vice versa and things like that so this two-sided maze once all the waste is cut away it's got tabs and stuff on it um, they have their starting point which is over here they can start either here or here they got two places they can start from uh, and they travel all the way around to the flip that's where the marble falls through when they flip it uh, then they've got to work their way to the finish line and stuff you know so you're gonna get these files too they'll be available to download in the uh, video description uh, as well as whatever we make now so you'll get that when I say make a two-sided maze you're like, well, you're not showing us how to make a two-sided maze. You're going to get the files. So it's just like the same as the one-sided, but it's two-sided. <laughs> All right. So um, let's uh, let's take a look at this here. Uh, and imagine, if you will, let me draw out my marble. Three, seven, five. Let's get that here. Okay. So as this marble travels uh, through the maze, we need it to be able to make the corner. You know, um, when we get into T sections and everything, it's you know that's fine and stuff. Um, even even on a corner like this, when it comes uh, to turn the corner, even though this inside corner is not radius, it doesn't always have to be. As long as you know we have because I'm going with a half inch clearance because my three eighths inch marble I'm going with a half inch clearance um, you know I don't necessarily have to radius every single corner but if my corner if I would have created my torrent corners tight or something then I'm gonna need to create that clearance so it can turn that tight corner my corners aren't very tight um, but uh, as we you know make our way around and stuff uh, in that maze we the goal is is just to you know make sure that that marble can get through you know smoothly and stuff and everything um, on uh, most of the uh, corners and all if the marble makes it all the way to the outer edge and you got to remember this outer edge is rounded and then coming up to those straight walls at the bottom of the cut 
So, um, you know, all this is going to be kind of just kind of radius and all. Uh, once it gets to that edge, if it can turn the corner, fine. We don't need to radius it. If we do need to turn uh, radius it, then, you know, create whatever radius you need. And the radius stone is, you know, on the inside corners, the outside corners are very important that they're three eighths uh, or half inch in this case, half inch for me. Uh, they're, they're a half inch, but um, in the case of this inside corner, I could go with an eighth inch internal radius just to kind of give just a nice, you know, a little bit of a turning radius, right? It doesn't have to be the full because if you look at the marble here uh, coming through here, um, there's, I mean, there's plenty of room for it to, uh, you know, get into the center of that path and and everything even with a small eighth inch internal corner it doesn't have to be the full uh you know uh quarter inch radius for a half inch type diameter or whatever um and and also and uh seeing that let's see I do want radiuses uh, on some of the traps because when the marble's coming, I want to kind of something that kind of forces it in, that might force it in there a little bit or something if they do the wrong kind of tilt. So I will radius those. I think I will radius all of my traps. Just, just because uh, it um, just gives it that opportunity for it just to fall into there. I'm gonna create some little drill hole areas that if the marble goes into trap, it gets stuck and they have to kind of get it out of that, you know, deep little pocket or whatever. They have to get it out uh, to get it going again if they do fall into a trap, not where it just goes and stops and then all they have to do is tilt it. I wanna kind of create something where it's a little bit challenging for them. Um, in a situation like this where we have kind of a wide girth, um, did I use that word correctly, girth? Yeah, where we have kind of a wide girth, uh, we might put a little divot right here that the ball could get trapped and they have to go around it to keep going and everything. So you can kind of play around with whatever you know uh whatever your uh, method's gonna be let me finish real quick if i jump too far on things this one's just a small little trap this is my finish line we're gonna throw some text in here and do some v carving okay now let's see here so if they're traveling around Unless they do a crazy tilt or something, they won't go into that trap. Now here, they have a choice of whichever way they tilt, uh, and um, it'll just bring them right back around. I guess that's okay. Let's see. This is a shortcut. If they, they can take the shortcut to the finish line, if they pass it, then they can just work their way back around. Um, I'm gonna put on this earth here, I'm gonna put a little divot here uh, so that, and when I say divot, it's gonna be a drilling tool path to go uh, just kind of a little bit, that they kind of have to go around it, whichever way they go around it. Um, to get to the finish line and all, cause it's just a simple little maze, something a little fun, something for the mind. Uh, I don't have a lot of crazy stuff going on with this, but um, what we have is we have our main path, can lay it out any way we want. We offset that main path to create that visual of our trail and also the pocket cuts. We have to close off all the vectors. So we have a closed vector and um, the uh, you know start to finish 
uh, you can you know fill in whatever kind of uh, traps you want what kind of little pass shortcuts uh, something that if they go down it brings them right back to where they started that would be fun um, I don't see any place I could do that yeah I don't see any place on this particular one that I laid out uh, that's a false all right so let's turn off the main path vector so we're back here uh, we can uh, get rid of the marble we don't need that anymore and let's look at our corners and let's think about our inside corners I because I'm used to filleting them I'm gonna go ahead and fillet the inside corners just to kind of create um, a little bit of a smoother trail and I am I did bring it down to an eighth inch radius on that uh, that's a trap I want to fill it that one let's see that's gonna be kind of a big sweep we have to keep in mind the size of our tool and everything and again you can use an end mill I'm gonna use a box core bit um, but you can use an end mill if you'd like I'm going to I'm gonna radius this corner I'm gonna give them a little bit more of a shot to go this way and instead of the other way uh, over here this one I'm gonna leave it the way it is to make it just a little bit tighter for them on that I'll radius that this one I'll leave how it is okay so that's gonna be my main vector trail here okay my main uh, vector trail my walls from where the marble cuts and everything I could uh, literally I could probably have made a few more pass and, and tighten this up a bit but on my walls they look like they're going to be about a half inch. Uh, well, it would help if I measured vertically, not horizontally. Um, yeah, five eighths, you know, on that wall there. So I definitely could have tightened up that trail uh, there. Uh, I got a lot of dead space here. Um, this dead space uh, you can use for text. Uh, your maze could say things like, uh, you know, um, it's gonna say of course start and finish but uh, you know um, the point of no return or you know uh, I don't know Jacob's corner whatever you want it to do um, it could say nothing but my walls are probably all of my walls are gonna be around that 5 8 inch thick yeah so if I wanted to tighten this up with even more of a grid, I could get tighter because uh, five eighths, uh, I want to go three eighths, so um, a quarter of an inch. You know, I could probably squeeze in, you know, uh, if I took out a quarter here, a quarter there, you know, that's a half inch. That gives me another room for another row or what have you. You can play around with it and, and have some fun. Um, for my little uh, divots and everything, uh, like here, um, in this spot uh, I want to center it up and I'm gonna center it up with that path right there there we go 
Now, what I did is I drug this circle that I'm creating here, I drug this circle over to the edge to get that dotted line to show me that center line there. And I also drug it up to the center here so I get that dotted line and it gives me that intersection to snap to. So snapping, geometry snapping and smart snapping is very useful for that uh, and everything. And, all. and now uh, that circle doesn't need to be that big. Uh, it's 3 8 I'm going to go... Let's go I'm just gonna as a filler put in a quarter inch uh, circle there but I'm most likely I'm most likely gonna just do a very shallow cut with my half inch radius bit so it's only cutting a certain depth um, and also a certain width you know because it's rounded so it'll be a little bit narrower there, but I'm gonna use a quarter inch as the filler for the uh, the drilling tool path. Uh, I wanna do one here as well. So I'm gonna hold down my control key and drag a copy of this one out. And again, I've got this one, I let go of the control key now. Uh, I'm gonna come up here to the center of this arc to get that dotted line there. And I'm gonna just come over and travel to the center of um, this point get that and that should give me right about there now I'm not um, I want them to have to go around that to get to that finish yeah. in one of these wide corners here I'm gonna steal this quarter inch hole again Let's see, this is gonna be my widest corner up here. I wanna give them a road block. Give them a little bit of a road block. It's gonna be just a small divot. They'll be able to get out of it, but kind of a road block and all in there. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. Let's get some text on the board. Uh, I'm just going to use a simple uh, Arial or Tahoma font, whichever uh, one suits you. Uh, it's just going to be a nice little square font. Uh, we're going to go a um, three quarter inch tall font, I believe. Am I going five eighths or three quarters? Let's find out. I'm going. Okay, so we're gonna say uh, start. Let's move that down. I'm using the arrow key on the keyboard now uh, to bump it down uh, a little bit. And you can use your control key when you're using arrow keys for micro movements, you know, to fine adjust that. So we're gonna have start here. Over here, we're going to have finish now on this one I could have the word finish you know kind of here and all but it's not really that blanket you know so I want to type in I want to go vertical here so I want to use a vertical font now a vertical font has the at sign in front of it uh, it's generally you find them at the top of your list and they have the at sign in front of them and that's going to be a vertical type font and I want to just find something comparable to the Tahoma, but I want it to be a vertical font. So it'll type in this direction. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because that's a kind of a tight spot there. So let's go three eighths. And so it'll type vertically like that. Um, so the at sign, if the font has the at sign, it's a vertical typing font uh, versus the horizontal. And let's see here. Should 
trying to think. Okay, hold on. I'm going to bring in a picture. Uh, let's go to the downloads folder. Let's go. Oh, let's see here. That picture was a little earlier on right here. All right, let's trace this image. <clears throat> and trace this image. Uh, Let's try that again. <clears throat> Trace tool. Uh, turn the fading off. I'm going to drag this up to 75. Default corner fit for me. Default noise filter. Click preview to trace that. Click apply and close. I'm in the black and white tool. I'm going to come up here and turn that bitmap layer off. And now I have this vector here. We're going to... Where do we want him? Here. You could do kind of a beehive theme font or a little design. Um, yeah. Finish line gets you the honey. Just trying to think of something that. Uh, If they go a certain way, it gets them into trouble. But uh, all right, I'm going to turn on my uh, original lines again. And I'm going to Make sure I'm in that layer, the, my main path layer. Make sure it's active because I'm going to be drawing on that path. I'm going to extend this line out to right there. I'm going to offset it. Now, when I offset this, it's going to create... A, uh, a duplicate of this line up here but I'm only going to use it for down here so I'm going to create an offset uh, on that line and uh, I'm going to take this I'm going to move it over to the toolpath vector layer I'm going to join it with a straight line on both ends. I'm going to turn off my main path again. And hit N on the keyboard. Node editing. I'm going to arc that. And I'm going to bring it just a little bit. I'm going to grab all three of these or both of those nodes and bring it down just a little bit closer. There. All right. Now, I am going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim this away, this, and this. Now, oops, don't do that. Control Z, undo, undo. Make sure you're on the right layer when you start trimming. Okay, let's do that one more time. Take those scissors and uh, turn off the other layer. Trim this away, this and this. Now, that duplicate vector that I had right here, I don't want that. I'm just going to hit delete. Select it, delete it. So now I don't have any duplicate vectors, but I opened up this little path right here. So if they get trapped, they're going to get stung by a bee. All right, let's see. Kind of liking the B theme, so I'm actually going to take and just throw a couple of more of these around. Uh, let's rotate him. I'm going to hit the number zero on the keyboard. Um, put him somewhere. Make him a little bit bigger. 
not not that big. Move him up. And uh, I don't know. Your graphics could be really kind of anything you want. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back into. Hold the control key down. Let's throw one here. Hitting the number nine key, I want to turn him around. So I got a little theme going there. Not much, it's something stupid, but hey, it works. Um, now, my little marble vectors when I was moving them around I must not have been holding the control key or I deleted them one of the two I don't know what I did with them but I'm gonna hold the control key down and I'm gonna drag this one back here get it set back up again hold the control key down and put it back here Make sure I'm at the center point. Okay, so we got a fun little theme. Nothing crazy, right? This is just just examples, guys. You can take this and go crazy with it. Uh, smaller ball bearing, tighter grid, crazier maze, round, rectangle, triangular shape. Who cares what it is, right? Um, uh, just make sure that whatever you're using, marbles, ball bearings and all, can fit and turn and all that wonderful jazz. All right, so I've got, well, dadgummit, where is my head at? You son of a gun. Let go of the mouse before you let go of the control key. Okay, let me make sure I'm snapped back there. Yep, I'm snapped there. Snap there. Okay. All right. I would be remiss if I didn't put a little starter bee there. Did it again. Let go of the mouse before you let go of the control key. Cool. All right. So we got a little bumblebee maze. All right. Let's create some tool paths. So my first tool path uh, is I'm going to do all the V carving first. That'll be simple for me. Uh, that way I'm using my um, V bit. Get rid of that text. I don't need that text. So my start button, hold down the shift key, select my little bumblebees here and my finish. Not button, but uh, going to be a V carve tool path. No flat depth, zero start depth, 60 degree V bit for me. 22 would be a great bit for this because of the thin lines. So I'm actually gonna use the white side SC50. Twenty-two degree V bit. I was debating on if I wanted to use the twenty-two on here or not. They are if I use the 22 on the bees it's gonna be a deep cut right around the head area here so let's go with it all right 22 degree V bit calculate preview that visible tool path Turn off the color so I can just look and see how deep that hole is. So yeah, it's almost three-eighths of an inch deep there. 
Uh, the wings and all look nicely defined and stuff. Good, decent depth, you know, uh, and everything there. But the center line is too deep. So since none of my other design is going to get limited uh, and everything, I just want to limit right behind the bee's neck. I'm going to put a flat depth in. The flat depth is a limit to the cut saying, hey, don't go past this far. And I'm just going to limit that to an eighth of an inch. And the only heavy blue area that I should have in this design should be right behind the, uh, let me turn this off, should be right here behind the uh, bumblebee's neck. And that's where it's going to flatten that area out. I'm not going to use an end mill for it. Just let my V-bit do it and everything. But um, that will limit those areas so they're not so deep and stuff there. So, all right. So that's our text and stuff. Okay. Now, the maze. Make sure you get your inside vector selected and all. looks good there we're going to uh, use a pocket cut we're going to uh, cut depth of this is an open one it's not a closed one so I don't have to go really deep with it I'm gonna um, I'm going to go the diameter of the, uh, the, uh, marble. So that way it is kind of below the sur or it's at the surface, the top of its level with the surface and all. So it can't just roll across the, like it can't roll out of the groove when they're twisting and turning and all. So three eighths of an inch. I'm going to use the... box core bit now let's take a look at all right, I have one open vector so the vector is um, if I go if I right click on my screen hit selection select open vectors it's going to show me the open vector and of course it's the whole trail right uh, so somewhere uh, I didn't close it off properly and it's going to be right here. You see that solid pink line in the middle of all this dotted line? That's that overlap. If you remember when I drug that vector over and I trimmed and everything, um, I still had this overlap right here. So if I go into node editing and everything right here, if I grab this node and all, you can see that black node didn't end at the start point. If I undo that, it went beyond. So those two, the end of that vector didn't connect and everything. So all I have to do is just drag this black node back to the green node. And um, that should close it up for me. Let's get out of node editing mode. And if I right click selection, select all open vectors, it still selected it, so even though I pulled the node right back, it didn't close it up, but the software will join it for me there. And so now I have one closed vector. Okay, cool. All right, so let's select our trail, our walls. Um, Let's remove this. It's going to be a raster. Calculate. Okay, now. I don't know why I said a raster. That was, that was stupid of me. It's going to be an offset. Calculate. There we go. All right, so in the uh, 
corners and everything, you can see where it's doing multiple passes and everything in those wide corners and all. The big thing here is, is what is the bottom of this cut gonna look like? Am I gonna have that nice radius or am I gonna have like waves right there? And if I have waves, then I need to, I've gotta change things up. So let's do a preview of that toolpath. Hold on. What was that? What's my depth here? Three eighths. Stand by. Let me turn that color off. So I can see this nightmare that's happening. Okay. Say what? That's insane. Why? Stand by, ladies and gentlemen. Let me measure something here. Okay, that's the right, the right stuff. So, Mr. Pocket Toolpath. That, I've never had that outcome what is that? Why is that carving? I know, I know it's a wide area here, but it's only carving the upper part here only an eighth inch deep. That pocket should be three eighths all the way. This area here should not be here. These raised areas, raised areas. And it looks like there's a hump here and a hump here. Like there's something in the middle going on there. <laughs> like that raised area and my mind's blown for a second bear with me just a minute that should be a straight plunge down it should be back and forth and around with one pass or not one pass multiple passes but one Pass. There should not be a half of it here and a half of it there. What? Don't tell me a simple maze is going to throw me off here. Todd smiling, going, Yep, let's do it as a profile. <laughs> no, I've never actually had this. Uh, I don't know what the heck's going on there, why it's only an eighth inch deep there. And why it's doing it in two passes. That should be a straight line pocket cut. Unless. Unless just because it's the same diameter as the bit. That it's making it. What? I think I drew my half inch diameter wrong in my tool. Let me see here. Is it say half inch? Standby. Where's my box for a bit? Diameter. One half. Okay. So it should fit. I'm going to do Let me throw my eighth inch in there, or my three eighths in there, just for a second and see what happens here.
Okay, so that's what it should look like. And the reason why the half inch didn't do that is because my walls are exactly a half inch. The three eighths, of course, I would have that line down the middle, you know, where it's clearing and everything here. But, uh, so, what that means for me is I'm gonna take my vectors that are selected, I'm gonna offset them outward like 10 thousandths of an inch. I'm gonna delete the original, create sharp corners where there's sharp corners, Select the new. Okay, all I did was just offset it, wind it out just a little bit. Now, if I measure, and I'll go over and look at the comments in just one second. 0.52, 10 thousandths, 10 thousandths, so 20 thousandths of an inch. I'm going to create that pocket toolpath again. Remove that tool and use my half inch. Select my vectors again. So that, that, and that. Calculate. Reset the preview. I knew I was going to have those wide areas in the in there, but uh, preview the visible toolpath. Okay. Better. Now, I knew I was going to have where in these wider areas here where that bit and all, uh, I'm going to be doing those divots and everything, those little drilling tool paths, but I knew I was going to have this area here um, in those wide uh, corners, all those diamond shapes. So right here at this intersection, generally all the intersections, I'm going to have that. But what was throwing me off is only part of it was carving an eighth of an inch and the other part was carving three eighths and I couldn't figure out why. And it was simply because the damn uh, uh, offset, the, the channels were just as wide as the bit. What? Crazy. All right, now, what I do wanna do is I don't want that to be 0.52 inches, okay? I want it to be 0.5, I wanna add just 10 thousandths. So I'm gonna undo the offset that I created and I'm gonna re-offset that, but this time I'm gonna offset it a five thousandths of an inch. Um, so that way it's gonna be 0.51 instead of 0.52. I don't need that extra 10 thousandths. Um, so just that little bit. And let's create that toolpath one more time. Delete that. Actually, delete that whole thing. Okie dokie, tokie dokie. Select this, that, and that. Calculate. Preview the visible toolpath, and let's go over and look at the comments. All right. So, even I screw up, ladies and gentlemen, which y'all know that every week. I do that every week. Um, let's see here. Let's come down. Kool-Aid, can you make it a two-sided game? Yes, you sure can. Uh, we talked about that earlier. You're gonna get an actual two-sided project. Uh, basically, this could be a two-sided game such as what I have here, where you have a maze on one side and then the ball falls through, um, like the ball falls through to the other side. So you have to start on one side, 
Once the ball falls through at the flip point, they have to go from that flip point to the finish line. So a two-sided project. You're gonna get those project files in the description of the video. So you're gonna get this, this file here in the description of the video um, along with whatever we make today. Uh, you can decide to alter or throw away whatever we make today because it's not the greatest in the world, but it'll work. Um, but you're going to get those files, Kool-Aid. So that, yes, a two-sided job, it could be a two-sided job for sure. Uh, you moved your divots instead of copying them. Yes, I thank you, Bob. Uh, I'm, I see I'm trying to catch up on all y'all's comments. I was too busy looking at the screen there going, what's going on? Uh, but yeah, Bob caught that. He's like, hey, you just moved your divots around instead of, uh, you know, copying them. So thanks, Bob. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, he even said, uh, I would propose another one in the middle of the shortcut. I would propose another in the middle of the shortcut at the bottom left. Slow the shortcut. Slow down the shortcut. Uh, oops, I was like, wait, where's my shortcut? Let's go back to this design. Let's see where Bob's pointing out here. On the shortcut. Ah, Bob, am I pointing in the right spot? Let me know if I'm pointing in the right spot. I think he's thinking right here on the shortcut to slow down using the shortcut, having one right here, or he might be talking about right here in the middle. Let me see what, how he worded that in the middle of the shortcut at the bottom left to slow it down right here so he is proposing that we throw one right here right there Yeah, good idea. It's a simple maze, so you got to have as many traps as you can. Thanks for that one, Bob. Okay, let's see here. Uh, the Pit of Despair, Brooke says. Uh, can you please touch real quick again on the flat depth and how it works on the fly? Yeah, Todd. Um, uh, Todd for freedom. Todd, a V-carved toolpath. That's a pocket. A V-carved toolpath looks at the space between any two lines that it's going to be carving between and it automatically calculates how deep it needs to cut for those two lines to meet at a V. And it's based on the space of the two lines plus the angle of the V bit that you're using. So the wider the space, the deeper the cut, the closer the space, the shallower the cut. The wider the V bit, the shallower the cut. The narrower the V bit, the deeper the cut. So because these lines, these these uh, little bumblebees here, they're so the vectors are so close together, so small. To get any real definition, if I were to carve this with a 90 degree V bit, I wouldn't have hardly any depth to it. If I were to carve it with a 60, a little bit more depth. I'm carving it with a 22 degree V-bit, so I'm gonna get a lot of depth and definition in those narrow spaces, but there is a wide gap right here between two lines, because it's gonna be carving in the middle. It's gonna be, that bit's gonna be carving in here and everything, so there's a wide gap right here. So that wide gap with my narrow bit is going to, you know, the space between the lines is, and the angle of the V-bit is gonna calculate how deep it needs to cut for those lines to meet at that V. And so that's gonna be a deep cut. Well, when you set a flat depth, that is a limit. So we are limiting the cut. We're saying, hey, anything beyond this point, flatten it out. Don't go past this point, okay, it's a limit. So when my V is coming down, when it gets to that point, whatever it is, in my case, I did an eighth of an inch, it's going to truncate the rest of that V and create a flat spot. So it's going to come and have to flatten that out. It's a limit. And any part of my design that exceeds that limit gets flattened out. If it doesn't exceed that limit, then it just carves to its normal depth. So when we're looking at the cut, Come 
over here. Okay. And we're looking at the cut. Let it focus. Give it a second to focus. 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 It's not going to focus. All right. On the wings and everything, uh, that narrow space between the lines, I'm only carving a little under a sixteenth of an inch, 0 0.0534. You can see that with the numbers at the bottom of the screen. But here in that wide space and all, I would have been carving three eighths of an inch deep. But I set the flat depth there so it flattens it off. It truncates that V and cuts it off. It creates that limit. But these areas didn't exceed that limit. It did, they didn't carve past an eighth of an inch. They were only carving a sixteenth. So they carved to their normal V. Any part of the design that exceeds the eighth of an inch, it's going to flatten off. So if we look at the A, the R, and everything here. So, and I wish it wasn't so damn blurry. Uh, but here, this area would have carved deeper than the eighth of an inch, so it flattens it off. And that's you, what you're looking at here is the tool marks. I don't know why it's so pixel pixelated. My resolution is set to high. Let's go extremely high for a minute. Ooh. Let's preview that again. Okay, a little bit clearer. Uh, so in this area here, the bit's going to flatten that off at that eighth of an inch. It's going to limit the cut there. Uh, but in areas where it um, doesn't exceed the eighth of an inch, uh, it's just going to cut to the V. So here in the R, right here in the corner, here in the corner, here in the corner, and the A, those areas are getting flattened out. Now, if I said, all right, let's go a little bit, instead of an eighth of an inch, let's say, okay, anything beyond 0.1875, three sixteenths. Calculate that tool path, preview it again. And you can see now that R is not, it's only cutting uh, 0.16 to 6 inches deep, so it didn't exceed the flat depth, so it carved to its natural V. But any part that exceeded the flat depth gets limited to that flat depth. So the flat depth is a limit, not a cut depth, it's a limit. Hopefully that helps. Does that help? It's a limit. Pocket cuts have cut depths, profile cuts have cut depths, drilling operations have cut depths. A V-carve has a flat depth, a limit. Okay, let's see here. Um, but I'm a bum. Um, bear with me. I'm trying to get through all y'all's comments. Um. Do you need another offset? Uh, bit dimensions correct. Yeah, I got to look at those. I had to look at those things, and I needed a slight offset. Uh, my path was the same uh, width as my bit diameter, and it didn't cut properly. So I offset it uh, five thousandths of an inch in both directions, which is a ten thousandths of an inch offset, and then it it was able to cut correctly. Crazy. Um, Let's see here. Uh, M man said bit make it 0.499. Um, the on that if we go into the pocket cut and we go into and uh, edit that bit, you see how the diameter is grayed out. I don't know why I'm trying. <laughs> I just moved my head like you're looking over my shoulder. That's funny. All right, you see how the diameter is grayed out? That's because it's a form tool. You have to draw the right half of that bit to scale so it, it creates that diameter. 
if I wanted to make it 0.499 on this form tool, I would have to redraw that profile so that when it creates the other half, that it makes it 0.499. It's a pain in the butt. So um, I just offset my vectors a little bit. But on a regular tool like an end mill or something like that, you can go in and change that diameter. You can cheat it, especially if you get an end mill from a factory uh, that is undersized. If you've ever calipered your end mill and you know a quarter inch end mill being, you know, instead of 0.25, it's 0.244 or something like that. Uh, and you have to cheat it and, and put the diameter in. It's exactly what the bit is, 0.244. You're not gonna put it at 0.25 if it's an undersized bit. Um, but with a form tool, you have to draw it, and I don't want to sit here and try to draw a, a 0.499 diameter circle. So I just offset the vectors a little bit. But yeah, I thought I'd be okay with the half inch, uh, uh, to be honest with you. I was more focused on the marble rolling through my 3 8 inch marble. I wasn't even paying attention that the bit, that half inch diameter was gonna cause an issue. But it's grayed out, so we can't make that change, Mr. Man. M Man. Okay, let's see here. Um, you do Kool Aid. That you, absolutely, you do learn a lot from the training classes. But uh, you still need to check the corners. <laughs> but you may still need to check the corners for sure. Yeah, we still got to go. We, there's still a lot of clean, a little bit of cleanup that we need to do. Um, would you need to? Uh, wouldn't you need too big? A little bit bigger for the corners just curious crystal uh, your one comment uh, further up in the chat um, where you said wouldn't you need to big a little bigger for the corners just curious was that supposed to say would you need a two bits a little bigger for the corners can you rewrite that question and tell me what that was? Uh, could have have to do with layers. Charles Hall, good question. Uh, could any of this have to? Could any of the issue had to do with the layers? No, sir. Uh, the particular layer that uh, I'm on, my blue layer here, uh, that is the only layer that is visible. Uh, my main path layer, the other vectors, they're turned off. And my dimensions layer don't play a role. Their dimensions are treated like bitmaps, like images. So the software ignores them. Uh, and uh, my layer one, which is my outside border and uh, everything, the profile cut border, that black layer, oh, layer one right here, uh, those vectors, they weren't part of the toolpath. So, uh, to end your specific question there, layers did not play a role with any issue there. Now, if I had two layers turned on and they had the same vectors on each layer, I would essentially be setting myself up for having duplicates. And the software would have thrown up a warning saying that there's a duplicate vector. It's going to be ignored, but, you know, uh, it's making me aware of it. A duplicate vector, I'll just show you as an example. I'm gonna take the word finish here and I'm going to copy it with the copy tool and I'm gonna paste. I'm pasted another finish right on top of that one. Now if I select both of those and I go in to calculate the toolpath, I'm gonna to get a warning here. First of all about my flat depth having to be a flat depth, so I'm gonna go 0.1875. And then I'm gonna get a second warning about a duplicate. There are six duplicates, one, two, three, four, five, six. Each one of my letters has a duplicate vector on it. There's six duplicate vectors identified in this toolpath. They're going to be ignored. So it's ignoring those vectors and not making it part of the toolpath. So layers did not create a problem uh, in, 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 in that instance. Now, of course, I wanna undo that so I don't have any duplicates and um, right click selection select all duplicate vectors I want to see this message no duplicate design but Mr. Hall 
Thanks for buying a digital wood carver. Uh, those, that was a good question, but it did not play a role. Uh, layers had nothing to do with it. All right, so let's see here. Um, a little lower. A little lower. Correct, <laughs> Bob. Okay, I'm just now catching up to you, Bob, where you're like a little lower. A little lower where you're pointing it off. There is a massive delay between what, what, what I'm talking and what you're actually seeing. That's funny. Um, okay, let's see here. Excellent on the flat depth light bulb moment. Yes, Todd. Yeah, flat depth is a limit, not a cut depth. Just remember that and you'll be all set. Okay, Crystal said, oh, I thought you were moving from that guy behind you. Don't. <laughs> yeah, don't do that to me, Crystal, now. Let's see here. But uh, thank God there's a wall behind me, I think. All right, let's see here. Wow, uh, do you see... Do you see many bits not being the size advertised? Brooks Martin, absolutely. So, I'll give you a classic example really quickly. Last week, a uh, digital woodcarver customer that lives here in Ocala, uh, he went down to Lowe's and, uh, or he had an Amana bit, uh, it broke, right? He broke the bit, a uh, quarter inch end mill. Uh, he was carving and uh, I forget what he hit, but he broke the bit. And so he ran down to Lowe's and bought a quarter inch upcut spiral end mill, Bosch end mill. And um, when he went to carve again, uh, at the, he used that bit. And when he went to carve, it left vectors, or not vectors, vectors is in the design. It left pieces of wood where it should have actually cleared. It should have cut up to this line, but it was cutting a little off. And it left this little strip. And uh, so he called me and uh, I ended up just, he's only about five minutes down the road. I popped over there uh, and um, uh, we looked at everything. I mean, I, I was racking my brain and I, we ended up measuring the diameter of the bit and it was 0.246. So um, we uh, said, okay. I had bought a brand new bit because he told me he bought the bit at Lowe's and I thought, you know, um, uh, you know, so I had in my toolbox another same bit from Lowe's, Bosch, it was a Bosch brand bit. Um, and uh, literally it was still in the pack. It was in my, uh, I, we opened it up, we measured that one and it was 0.244. And so, we ended up programming them in as 0.246 and 244 in his tool database. I gave him that other bit, but I had him purchase an Amana bit. And uh, he got the Amana bit, and I actually, uh, I need to refer to the text message on what the size the Amana bit was. Give me two seconds here. Um, the Amana bit wasn't quarter inch either. It was undersized also. Um, and, uh, he was, it was, for some reason my phone is, hello? My phone just uh, didn't show me anything. Okay, uh, let's scroll back up here. Let's see here, open this up. He, he is, hold on, I gotta find his phone number again. I just had it and I lost it. Where'd you go there, bud? Right there. And scroll down to the text message. Hey, I got my Amana quarter inch bit. It measured 0.244 at the tip and the shank was 0.250. So at the cutter, Measuring at the widest diameter cutter because it is a spiral, right? You know, it is a, it is a, uh, it was a uh, down cut spiral, but measuring at the widest diameter of the bit, it was 0.244 for that one as well, and the shank was 2.250, so um, it was just as, it was just as off as the Bosch bits were. So yes, you do, you will find yourself getting undersized milled bits at some time at some point. Okay. Um, yeah, that's not a revolution. It's probably a revolution, you know, to some, but yeah, it, you know, your quarter inch end mill may not be a quarter of an inch. Your, you know, 
This might not be. If you ever have a bit, a uh, quarter inch uh, bit uh, slip out of your router, you know, you think, man, damn, I got this thing as tight as possible and it keeps slipping out and all or whatever. Uh, and then you go to measure it and the, the shank's undersized. That happens too. Um, let's see here. Um, what was the technique for rotating the image uh, to a given angle? So when you are rotating, uh, if you use your keyboard shortcuts of the number nine, it will rotate an object counterclockwise in 45 degree increments. And if you use the number zero on your keyboard, it will rotate clockwise in 45 degree increments. So if I have an object selected and I hit the number zero key, I can just keep hitting the zero key and it will rotate that object in 45 degree increments uh, in things. Um, so nine is counterclockwise, zero is clockwise. If you're ever curious about shortcuts and stuff like that, uh, under the help menu, keyboard shortcuts, there's an entire list uh, of keyboard shortcuts and you can, if we were to pop that open, what that does is it opens up the manual to the keyboard shortcuts list and as we uh, you know, come down, you can see the number nine key is a rotate a selected object 45 degrees counterclockwise, and the number zero key rotates 45 clockwise. So there are a lot of different keyboard shortcuts that you can use to do a lot of different things, and uh, that happens to have been one of them. So good question, thanks. Um, Let's see here. I'd like to see you try to profile the line marble path. Okay, we can do that. Um, Crystal, wouldn't the dimensions need to be a little bigger for the corners? No. Uh, as long as, on the corners and all, as long as our uh, marble can make the path, the turn, uh, we, should, we would be fine. So... I, on some of them, I did an eighth inch radius. So we have that nice turning radius and all. Uh, and some of them I did um, uh, a quarter inch radius here to widen that up. But if we look at, you know, we will have um, plenty, plenty of room to turn that corner even on the corners where uh, there's an eighth inch radius, we still have, we'll still have plenty of room for that router or that router, that marble to make its corners and stuff. So they don't need to be wider. No, ma'am. Okay, let's go down. We're gonna profile this uh, for old Todd there in just a second, but let's see, there was two more questions. In the finished letters, why are they different colors, black and pink? In the finished letters, why are they different colors? The only time you would get generally different colors, black and pink, is if you have duplicates and all. But uh, these are pink, they're solid. If I converted this to a vector, you would see they're just pink and white, you know. But it looks darker uh, if I put them back as a group or as a font. Uh, it just, it kind of looks. Uh, in some cases it could look black and pink you know because of the shading or the lighting like that might look black right there to you um like it does on my tv screen uh black and then it's pink down here but it's actually all pink it's just the uh the way the screen looks at it and it's because it's a solid line if we go into again if i convert that to a curve uh then it should look pink on your screen no. Right. Okay. And then the last question was, uh, Brooke said, I need to measure my bits. Um, what is the difference between taking a normal font and rotating it vertical instead of using the at sign? Not a thing, man. Not a thing. Uh, so the question was, uh, hey, what's the difference? What's, what's the difference of taking a normal font and simply rotating it vertical versus using the font with the at sign in front of it. Nothing, right? I could take a normal font and I could rotate it vertical uh, like that. Uh, but if I'm typing out, you know, like a lot of vertical lines or sentences and all, it's just, it, you know, sometimes it's easier just to use that vertical font um, so that 
when you're typing you know it's already there right I don't have to do the keystrokes of rotate uh, or any of that stuff it's just it's typed out the way I want it so that that that's really the only advantage to it uh, but no there's no difference I can rotate that vertical font counterclockwise um, and it's now a horizontal font right so yep no difference just one types vertical versus the other um, horizontal all right let's get this uh, back where it belongs okay and I was just using uh, the undo button here or control Z is the keyboard shortcut for that all right so now that we're all caught up with questions and stuff now let's go back and we're gonna do uh, uh, we'll come back and we'll finish up our toolpath but we'll, let's do one toolpath for Todd let's come in here uh, and turn on our main path here we're going to select our vectors except for the two circles and we're going to do a profile toolpath cutting three eighths of an inch deep with our half inch box core bit on the line calculate preview the visible toolpath okay and so everything looks good right here we have a ramp that when it when that marble comes it's going to jump this ramp into this divot area and jump this ramp into this divot area that might be a fun marble maze uh, at each corner we have a ramp um, and things but other than that we've got a ramp where the intersections are where the bit comes and it stops there and it cuts that line then it comes here and in, in this line um, so other than that not too too bad right so other than those corner ramps where it round where it rounds up so it's hard to see but it it rounds up and then back down on the other side on that corner but other than that Maybe that would cause the marble to go high, like a, like on a berm, like if you're BMX riding, you know, go high on the berm and around and then jump over that whoop de doo Go high on the berm on here and things. That could be something that could probably be sanded out, a little thumb sander or whatever, but it's not too bad right so there you go Todd not too shabby all right okay let's go back and preview our visible toolpaths Okay, now where the uh, little right here in the corners, on those wide corners, same thing that uh, there's no ramp here, but there's a little, a little triangle right there where this pass, this pass, and this pass come together. There's a little triangle right there that. Um, uh, would need to be dealt with uh, you get that nice wrap around the corner a nice square cut around the corner but you got a little triangle right here the ones here I'm not worried about because I'm about to do my little divots and drill there um, but uh, these little guys they're super small uh, literally uh, just a couple of whites with a little sandpaper and then be gone but uh, the corners nice wide clean corners okay 
So that little place where this toolpath, this toolpath, you know, comes in on that Y corner, we've got this little triangle right here. Can y'all see that? Let me zoom in. This little triangle right here that you'll be uh, touching up. Okay. All right, let's do our trap uh, divots. So this one, this one, and 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 uh, Bob, I think you said that's correct right here. I think that was correct right there. Uh, that one and that one. This is going to be a drilling tool path. Now I'm already down three eighths of an inch, so I'm going to start at three eighths, and I just want a little divot. Now I'm going to use my same box core bit. I think uh, eighth of an inch. Let's see. Let's go in here and look and see what an eighth of an inch. Yeah. So, can the marble see the wider, the deeper I go, the wider that gets as it starts to go deeper to my half inch diameter, right? So if I went a 16th, it would be a little bit smaller hole. The question is, is can my marble maneuver around this hole at this size? Can it maneuver, let me turn this upright and zoom in here. Can it maneuver around here without getting trapped in there? Or is it always gonna get trapped and they have to get out? That's the little game we gotta play. Now, if I change that up, and let's say that I went a 16th of an inch, And uh, we looked at that. My diameter at the tip of that bit, if I go a sixteenth of an inch, then it's going to be a smaller, a little smaller circle. It's still sixteenth of an inch deep, but it's going to be a smaller circle. Let's take a look at that. Yes, now Todd, Todd, uh, a flat end mill as a pocket cut with this uh, would work too. So either the circle there is not quite centered or that little where the three paths come together. Cut there, cut there, cut there, cut there. That circle is high. It needs to be... All right, I've got to cheat here for a minute. I'm gonna use a line and I'm gonna go from here to here. Uh, draw a line here. Oh, I don't know what the hell that was. Control Z, undo. All right, line there to there. And I'm gonna use this line that I just drew, this center point on this line. I'm gonna draw a line straight across. Okay. That's where my circle should be. I could have used guidelines too. I don't know why I drew lines, but I could use guidelines too. All right, so let's do the same thing here. I'm gonna take these two lines and move them down here. And I'm gonna 
take this line. Snap it to the center there. And that one's off too. All right, good. Okay. This one looks like it's off. This one's easy enough. I can draw a line from here to here. And then I can snap this to the center. And of course, let's make sure that I'm centered here. So every line has a center point. If we go into node editing and I look at this line here, the center point is right here, this little square. So if I wanted that, um, first of all, get out of node editing mode. If I wanted this line to be on the center of this line, I could snap it there. And then now I can find the center of this line here. And now that's perfectly centered in between this kind of rectangular area, right? Using lines and vectors to help us align vectors. Okay, so let's redo the drill tool path, recalculate that. That's gonna give me We'll preview it again. And let's see here. Um, might try a flat bit instead. Yeah, I want to try that too, Dot. All right. So my circle should be right in the middle of these little, these little pyramids. Um, except for right here. That one looks odd. That one's a weird looking trap. And that is because, um, That is because it's the same width as, yeah, okay, that's what that one is gonna look like. It's not gonna be one like this because this is a wide area here. If uh, this was cut in the middle like this, you would see those tool marks from that wider bit there as well, but it is still a 16th of an inch deeper. Okay, so I got these little areas that I've gotta clean up, and but let's do this as a pocket cut one more time Select our vectors, pocket cut, three eighths of an inch deep, remove the box core bit, put in the, uh, you could use a three eighths inch end mill, whatever the case may be. I'm gonna use just a quarter inch end mill. Half inch end mill would do it as well, but I'm gonna stick with a quarter just because it can fit in all these little nooks and crannies and all. And calculate. Now this one's gonna give me no radiuses, rounded corners or anything like that. It's just gonna be a flat bottom. There's not gonna be those little ramps or uh, little divots or any of that stuff. A pocket cut on those closed vectors with the end mill. Almost there, almost there. And then we got to wrap up guys. We spent way too long on this simple maze, but much cleaner, right? We just don't have that round radius bottom, okay? But the end mill gives us a much cleaner uh, path, you know, cause it's, it's flattening that out. Um, if we put in, if we threw in our drill holes, um, our little divots there. Could probably go a little wider with them now, a little bit deeper. 
but they look normal, right? When it's done as a pocket email because we don't have those, we don't have that, we don't have that rounded bottom, that radius bottom, right? Um, if I wanted radius bottoms, but still this flat effect here, I could even go with a uh, bowl and tray bit, right? So let me quickly show you that. Uh, let's same vectors, pocket tool path, remove the quarter inch end mill, uh, select my bowl and tray bit. I'm gonna do the white side 1370, seven sixteenths inch diameter. Um, select that. Calculate. Preview that tool path. Now this is going to give me the flat bottom and the radius edges. So the side I have the flat bottom and the radius edges. So if we look here, we have a flat bottom, but we have the radius edges. Bowl and tray bit. Right? little radius and then the flat bottom. So that's a pretty clean cut too, also. Pretty clean cut also. Bowl and tray bit, end mill, those give you clean bottoms and all. The box core bit, you're gonna have those little triangles that you'll just touch up and everything, just depending on what you wanna use. If you want that round bottom, it's gonna be a box core bit or a bull nose or a ball nose or a round nose bit also, but commonly referred to as a box core bit. Um, some websites call it a round nose, but, but the bowl and tray bit has nice radius uh, edges, slightly radius edges and then the flat bottom. So the ball would still travel well. So that's an option. And if we did our drilling tool path in that one, you know, we would have those little traps. And I'd probably go a little bit deeper. I probably would go, instead of a 16th, I probably, you know, I might, um, from a 16th to an eighth, it's only another 16th of an inch deep. Uh, let's, let's do that real quick. I just wanna see. Bear with me here. Uh, drilling toolpath. Instead of a sixteenth, let's go an eighth. I just I'm not sure if an eighth inch, if the ball, the marble will be able to roll around it. Like if they can maneuver, if they're real slick, if they can maneuver around it, uh, is the uh, option. I mean, is it to uh, where they get trapped in there and it slows them down or they can bunny hop it or whatever. This one gets a, this one gets into the radiuses a little bit going that deep, but that makes it even more difficult on that shortcut, right? If you use a bowling tray bit kind of thing. So either one, whichever one floats your boat, right? End mill, box core bit, bowling tray, whatever looks cleanest, but it is gonna be a pocket cut, not a profile. Okay, pocket cut, not a profile um, with your closed vectors and all. All right, let's do the final quickly. Final tool pass is we have our handles here and our profile cut. The software is smart enough to know that I have an inside cut here and an outside cut there. So it's a profile cut cutting all the way through my material uh, with a quarter inch end mill on the outside right of the line. Uh, for preview purposes, I'm not gonna add tabs, but you would add tabs. Um, or you could two-side tape the project to your uh, project board, but I'm not gonna add tabs. So that way I can remove the waste areas. Mm. 
Okay, and then we also have this little divot here. Now this one I'm actually going to uh, use the, uh, the drilling tool path again, but I'm actually gonna go uh, half the uh, bit, um, 1875 inches deep uh, with that half inch box core. And it's gonna be, uh, ah, let's go a little bit deeper. Um, it's just gonna be a place for the marble to put the marble when it's not in play or something. So a place for the marble rest so it can drop right in there. Yep, and uh, yeah. So marble mazes, this one's super basic, right? There's, there's not a lot to it. Um, the two-sided project is a fun one. Uh, you're gonna get those files in the description of the video. Uh, that one's a fun one. It's got a decent trail on it too. It's not, not bad at all, you know? Uh, to get to start to finish but uh, Amazon your steel marbles or marbles whatever I like the steel ball bearings uh, steel bearings um, smaller ball bearings I'm using a 3 8 inch diameter that's kind of my go-to but smaller ball bearings means smaller trails tighter corners and traps and and more that you could fit into a small little handheld project like that uh, your round mazes, uh, those are pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple of videos online uh, on YouTube of making a round marble maze uh, and stuff like that. Uh, those are fun projects. And um, yeah, just you know, uh, use your using your grid, using your offsets. Um, let me get back to this project here. Using your grid using your offset tool, um, offset tools, node editing, or nodes, uh, your fillet tool, uh, and um, extend tools, those little tools that you don't really use a lot or a whole lot often all. Uh, these are fun little projects and you can use all them. Now, the last tool I am gonna do is a round over bit. I am going to smooth up these inside edges. This is the last thing and we're done. I'm gonna do a round over bit on the outside edge here and on the inside of the handles. So with those same vectors that I had selected for the profile cut, I'm gonna come in and do a profile tool path cutting a quarter of an inch deep and I'm gonna be using the white side um, 2050 round over bit. And that round over bit has an eighth inch radius, quarter inch depth, cut depth to the round over. So that's why my cut depth is a quarter of an inch. Uh, we're gonna be cutting on the outside of the line. However, we're going to be stepping over let me get my bit in there first. Uh, we're gonna be doing an allowance step over of 1 8th of an inch. So negative 0.125. Always a negative number when you're going over the lines. So we're gonna calculate that tool path and we're going to zoom in here so you can see what's happening. Preview that visible tool path and all we're gonna do is give an eighth inch radius to the outside of that, those handles and all, and the uh, uh, the top of the board, just uh, make it a little bit more comfortable to use. So the white side 2050, 2050, uh, eighth inch round over bit is what I have, what I use, but it could be any bit, you know. Uh, I'm not sponsored by white side to say that. So it's just the one I use and recommend to customers. For an eighth inch round over, it's a really nice eighth inch round over bit. Um, uh, the question uh, that someone may ask is, hey, could you use the roundover bit on the inside of the trail? Could you, could you, could you? You could. Would you? Not sure. Let's, uh, for kicks and giggles, let's uh, see what that would look like. Profile cut. This time I'm gonna be on 
the inside of the line. Uh, same parameters inside the line, step over negative 0.125, calculate. Now it knows I have these two inside vectors, so it'll cut on the outside of the line for them. Uh, preview the visible toolpath, and that will just round over the top, you know, to smooth out the top if someone wanted to do that. Right? Just a little finishing touch if you want to, don't have to but you know, it gives it that finished look. All right, uh, we're gonna say our um, goodbyes here, but Todd said, we have a go, one more, two more comments. Um, I thought if the material was thick enough, the flute tool path would act as a ramp to speed up or slow down the marble too. Just thinking out loud. Very cool. So Todd is referring to the ramping toolpath um, and uh, the um, fluting toolpath. I call it the ramping tool, but the fluting toolpath. Because the fluting toolpath, you can do little linear ramps from a certain depth down, or you can do a ramp where it ramps down and ramps up, right? So yeah, you could give that a try. You could, you could draw your center line. Now that one... Uh, that would be kind of on a center line because you're going to want that ramp to be right in the middle of this path. So, and it would be a short, it would be short segments, not long ones. You don't want to ramp over the whole length. You, you know, you would draw short lines, but it, it needs to be in the middle of that path. And so where it would ramp down and then up, so it would create kind of waves. So yes, thinking out loud that theoretically would, uh, that theoretically would work. Um, we can test that really quickly by, I'll just do it right here on this straightaway. If I take this straightaway uh, and uh, draw a line from here to here, just for a moment, I'm using that line for a center point so that I can just draw a line right here, okay? Uh, this line that I drew vertically is nothing. It was just for the center point. So I knew I was in the center there. All right, ramping toolpath, uh, starting depth. I'm already down at three eighths of an inch, right? So I'm gonna start at three eighths. The flute depth, right? Uh, let's just go for kicks and giggles. Let's go, um, let's go a quarter. No, that's too much. Let's go three sixteenths, 1875. Um, on this one, would we still use the half inch bit? Because it's gonna, yeah, we would. Uh, the half inch, uh, hold on. I um, I used the, uh, hold on a second. I used the three eighths. It's gonna look weird because I have the I in the very final profile or the final toolpath that we looked at. I I use that uh, bowl and tray bit, you know, that gave me the small radiuses. It's gonna look weird uh, if I. Uh, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and go with the um, the uh, three eighths inch box core bit. I won't go half inch. I'm gonna go three eighths, which is the same size as the marble. And it might keep me right in the middle of those radiuses. So we'll go with the 3 8 inch box core bit. I'm going to ramp at the start and end of the line. So I want it to come down and then back up. Uh, the ramp length, um, uh, the percentage, I'm going to go, uh, let's go 30%. So it ramps down 30, over and then up 30. It should. So let's calculate that. First of all, select the vector. And I want to end this by 10 o'clock, so we only have four minutes left. All right, let's uh, kind of get in here. Let's turn this upright so we can see what's happening. Let's get close and personal. Now I'm going to turn it a little bit. So what we see is there's going to be a down ramp, across, and then up. So let's see what this looks like. Preview the visible toolpath. So there's like a little dip 
down and then back up. So that could be something in it. That three eighths got me right in that radius. Let's go a little bit longer on the ramp. Let's go a hundred percent. Let me see what a hundred percent does. Hundred percent should take me. Let's go fifty percent. Let's not go strong first. Calculate that. I'm gonna just preview the visible toolpath. It should kind of remove what needs to be removed. No, that's not gonna do that. All right, one last quick thing here. So let's go to. Um, preview that and the flute preview the visible tool bat. so let it cut that and then we'll cut that flute and then we're going to call it a day um all right so hey uh can you make a rubik's cube next Ooh, i can make dice and if i can carve on a six-sided dice i could make a cube for a rubik's cube but how the parts snap together they've got that fun little thing on them so they snap together so you can turn and twist and all i don't know kool-aid i have to look at that one it's an interesting project but though but i'll if i let me see what i can come up with okay so this one's a 50 percent ramp so it's it's more of a dramatic ramp and everything and back up so that could be a cool little trap so yeah todd so there you go you can you know fluting tool pads you could throw that in the mix every once in a while that could be a heck of a trap for them that they couldn't get out of or something you could go you know and i only went three sixteenths of an inch deep um where it's ramping out and then ramping back up uh you could have it just ramp out where it dead ends and doesn't go back up it's just a straight ramp so it's kind of like they're in there and they have to bunny hop their way out of it or something who knows but yeah very cool all right, uh, guys and girls, we are going to wrap up here. It's 9.59. We've been going at it for two hours and 45 minutes on a simple maze project. Um, but uh, let's, um, if I may, uh, let me kind of preview these visible tool paths because the last image showing on the screen is kind of becomes my thumbnail. Uh, uh, it's nice of... Um, uh, Yahoo to uh, Yahoo YouTube to do that so let's get over here get this centered back up uh, my profile cut preview that toolpath to cut out those parts preview that visible toolpath as well all right let's get this parts wasted away here tilt this a little bit like that and let's come over large that up that'll be my thumbnail and I need to be on the other side because my head's on this side right there looks good all right everybody until next time thanks for hanging out with me tonight I really appreciate it uh, and um, you know hey this this was just a couple of lines and a very simple right but this is the process you would use to create marble mazes so now take this little tidbit of information and then come up with something wild and crazy you could have figure eight mazes you could have two-sided projects you have round projects square projects so now you can take the little fundamentals beginner basic fundamentals and then play around with them and create some really unique patterns mazes uh, that could be heart shaped whatever right so hopefully you can take this basicness and turn it into something pretty cool in one of your projects until next time i'll see you soon